वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश वी एस एस डी कॉलेज कानपुर वी आर डिस्कसिंग पेपर थर्ड नाइनटीन सेंचुरी इंग्लिश लिटरेचर दिस मॉड्यूल ऑन जॉन हेनरी न्यूमैन इज रिटन बाय डॉक्टर अंशुल चंद्रा इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस जॉन हेनरी न्यूमैन एज अ राइटर his traits his qualities techniques used by him specifically in two essays idea of university and a definition of a gentleman in this module we'll also discuss newman and the oxford movement theme of his writing his prose style and the liberal education and definition of a gentleman his major issues and ideas discussed in that by the end of the lesson we'll come to know who is john henry newman what are the themes of his writings what is the oxford movement what are the newman's views on university education and the definition of a gentleman who is the real gentleman cardinal newman was the pioneer of the oxford or tectarian movement He was born in 1801 in the city of London. His father John Newman was a banker and his mother Jenema was descended from a notable family of refugees in England. At the age of 7 he was sent to Great Ealing School. He was influenced by the writings of Thomas Newton and Joseph Milner. He also read some devotional literature by William Law and William Beveridge. He was educated at Trinity College Oxford. There he was close friend of Pusse and Harel Frond. During his education in Oxford, he took private pupils and was elected at Oriel in 1822. In 1825 he became curate of St Clement's Church. Here he was engaged for 2 years and wrote many articles. In 1826 he returned as tutor of Oriel where he met Richard Froude and both of them formed a high deal of the tutorial of his clerical and pastoral. He was also a preacher at Wild Hall. Now Newman's connection with the Oxford movement is necessary to understand. Oxford movement was basically a movement for religious reforms we also know it as tractarian movement or anglo catholic revival it is called oxford movement because some oxford professors and scholars were the force at the back of it the oxford movement sprang mainly from the conditions that arose in england as a result of the demand of equal treatment by the non conformist on the one hand and by the roman catholics on the other this movement had got nothing to do with politics the aim of the oxford movement was to restore the dignity purity and zeal of the church it also aimed to protect the church from the encroachment of the state as threatened by the whig reform bill of 1832 gates writes that oxford movement was in its essence an attempt to reconstruct the english church in harmony with the romantic ideal john cable was the real founder of the oxford movement but newman was the chief protagonist of the movement John Cable gave the emotional atmosphere of the movement and Newman provided its dialectics. There are different phases in the personality of Newman, the psychologist, the moralist and the preacher. All the three are so beautifully blended in his personality that Newman had a philosophical mind. He has studied Aristotle's logic which had a major influence on his thinking about knowledge as a personal position and existent realities he greatly admired bacon and his distinction 
between physics and natural theology. Newman seemed to be influenced by the warmth of oratorical style and it appeared in his writings. He developed a distinction between natural religion and revealed religion. Newman was deeply committed to education, to the spiritual as well as academic excellence. Professor Nicholas Lash in 1990 picked out as the hallmark of Newman's genius and said, the very closeness of speech to speaker of text to thinker. He was pointing out that he made a simple matter distinctive by the way of his saying. The some major themes of his writings are revelation and church. Revelation, in his writings, he revealed religion which gave his life its unity. In one of his works, Newman himself described revelation as the initial and essential idea of Christianity. Unquote. Church is the second main theme of his writings. Revelation is received by the community of faith, that is the church. Newman's whole life moved around the church. From his conversion, through his involvement in Oxford movement, attempt to restore to the church until he comes to be received into the Catholic church, a perpetual search for the church was found in his works. He wrote about dignity, faith, strength of liberalism in religion. He also wrote much about education. Education is another important point in his writings. He described education as his time and he referred to education in a large sense of the word. He believed in liberal education which developed a whole human personality with intellectual excellence. Such human beings shine in every walk of life under all possible circumstances. The prose style of Newman is noteworthy. He possessed a passionate temperament, critical attitude and contemplative bent of mind. His prose style is essentially classical, characterized by lucidity, transparency, restraint and balance. It faithfully represents his inner urges. He was also a great stylist. Rickett wrote about his style, I quote, It is beautiful with a limpid lucidity, a chastened eloquence, a gentle persuasiveness, unquote. His style is termed as transparent because he described his thought with naturalness. Gentle irony and satire were there by a delicate humor in his writings. His prose was characterized by lucidity, restraint and transparency. His style was the perfection of classical simplicity and discipline. He possessed the imagination of the poet, though in his prose writings, he is so fluent, somewhere it appears as if a poet is narrating. He was the master of simple prose. He was a natural critic as well. He was extremely sensitive to intellectual difficulties and always tried to solve them. Newman always tried to justify his writings on logical grounds. His words convey his meanings Clearly, he always try to prove himself logically. As far as the diction of Newman is concerned, we can say that his diction is remarkable for his strength, elegance, flexibility and aptness. The use of gentle irony was known to him very well. He was a lover of clear, definite and tangible statements. His diction is condensed and his quality of covering a wide range is noteworthy. His thoughts naturally move and explain with clarity the conflicts of his heart. Sometimes he wrote long sentences but his manner of expression is marvelous. Impact of Wordsworth can be seen clearly on his writings. 
Now let us discuss the idea of a university by Newman. Newman's The Idea of University is like most of his books an occasional work. Actually, it consists of two books. The Discourses on the Scope and Nature of University Education published in 1852 and Lecture and Essay on University Subjects 1859. It is a collection of lecture and articles written by Newman as the founding president of the university. The idea of a university deals with the aim of university education. It also deals with the qualification of the university teachers and the ideals of liberal education. It is famous for its advocacy of liberal education, which means perfections of the intellectual. It is different from scientific and vocational trainings. Scientific and vocational trainings cannot be termed as the real university education. It shows lucid and fine prose style of Newman. He clearly handles the subject with the meaning and finally conveys what he wanted to convey to his readers. In the idea of a university, Newman's views on university education is described. In preface, he says, I quote, the view taken of a university in these discourses is the following, that is a place of teaching of universal knowledge. This implies that its object is on the one hand intellectual, not moral, and on the other that it is the diffusion and extension of knowledge rather than the advancement. If its object were scientific and philosophical discovery. I do not see why a university should have students if religious training, I do not see how it can be the set of literature and science." Unquote. From the preface, the idea of a university, in the first discourse, Newman refers to two questions. If it is consistent with the idea of university teaching to exclude theology from a place among the sciences which it embraces? And the next, whether it is consistent with that idea to make the useful arts, science, its direct and principal concern. Now you can see that what Newman wanted to convey by this essay. Actually, he was not satisfied with the way universities were working. Being at the helm of the affairs, he always tried to put his point of view regarding the university education. The education in the university, whether it is moral or purely academic, that was the question of content. And he expressed his points of view regarding this issue very clearly. In the second discourse, Newman writes about theology. He thinks that university education should be given with theology because it is also a kind of science. It may be divine, human, sensible, intellectual and the like. In third discourse, he describes that theology and all sciences are connected together. They have bearings on one another. If we exclude theology from the science, it is indefensible. Then intellectual excellence. In fourth discourse, he reveals how theology is connected with all science. If any one of them is neglected, it would become prey of another. In fifth discourse, Newman focuses on liberal education. He thinks that liberal education is simply the cultivation of the intellect and its object is nothing more or less. In the sixth discourse, Newman says that knowledge and learning are related to each other. There is two kind of universities, one insists on examination and the other insists on guidance. Newman likes second kind of university where students learn from one another. Now you see that in this essay, two very important points have come forward. One is the connection of theology and science. Religion and science, they are admixed. It is very difficult to make them separate. And if they are standing on different parameters, if they are not mixing with one another, 
then what happens that it is not for the welfare of the whole human being another important point that newman comes forward with is the type of education given in the university the type of university itself whether it is just for examination or it is there to learn something learning and passing examinations they are two different things one gets in the university appears for the exams takes the degree and goes out is it education is it the purpose of forming the university no newman believed that the other kind of university is more important where one is supposed to learn something to share something and share his learning in seventh discourse newman suggests that intellect to be trained about truth he wants that kind of education which is able to understand truth with the help of liberal education one can improve his professional skill in eighth discourse he asserts that reason leads the mind to the catholic faith newman criticizes doctrine of reward and punishment he does not favor compulsion this shows fear of god in one's mind not love for him according to him politeness is a virtue which should be acquired by everyone in the last discourse he says that development of mind should be the aim of a university church can be helpful in it as it is the representative of the religious principle newman believes that a university is a place where students and teachers they assemble for the purpose of cultivating the intellect to gain knowledge the aim of teaching in a university is to give that kind of knowledge which can develop the whole personality of an individual now you can note it down that in this essay whatever newman is preaching in fact this is the requirement of the age the universities they have lost their moral purpose they have lost their original aim and he just wanted to convey that there should be the difference between an industry and university university is not the industry to produce the graduates university should just train people for their overall personality development university should give that kind of knowledge it should impart that kind of knowledge which is helpful for them for their personality and later on for their professions also newman said its object is intellectual not moral moral education is being provided by churches a university has to play scientific as well as a religious and cultural role a person should gain knowledge by means of literature and science newman always insisted that literature and science both are very very important in their own places you cannot negate the one for the sake of other literature makes you a better human being science make you more rational and a person to be perfect needs both education should be balanced well rounded and moderate it should not only promote wisdom and knowledge but also the freedom of thought newman believes that the main aim of a university is to provide liberal education what he meant by liberal education liberal education means that you should be free to study what you want to study liberal education means that this education should empower you and not bring you into chains liberal education means that your thought powers your thinking ability should be developed it manifests itself in courtesy polish of words manners and action the main aim is to make a gentleman and not a christian he also refers to the qualification of the teachers because a trained person can display his qualities with greater effect teachers only getting degree if they go there 
and start teaching and take teaching as a job that was not the intention of the new man teaching should not be just a money making job it should be a profession a noble profession where you are going to train people for the welfare of your future this idea of university given by newman is ideal as well as practical another essay by him is also very important but before that liberal education needs more detailing the idea of a university insists on liberal education which means perfection of the students he believes in the development of the whole personality having a cultivated mind fine taste noble bearing and polished manner he differentiated between good and useful education he thought that knowledge of literature is an essential part of education but if education is given with theology it will be the best instrument of mental cultivation and intellectual progress at the same time newman gave the example of physical and mental health both are necessary for a healthy person same as mental culture through liberal education is useful the object of liberal education is to gain intellectual excellence according to newman it is more important for a student to become a noble man than to become a professional man because such human beings shine in every walk of life under all possible circumstances newman thought to develop the ability think clearly and logically is essential the power of making correct judgment is also a part of education and educational process newman wanted to give liberal education because it helps teachers to save from academic imperialism the student who gains this kind of knowledge has all attributes of life like freedom equitableness calmness moderation and wisdom in this essay we have learned that education teachers and theology all should be mixed to produce better results the other essay we are going to discuss is definition of a gentleman the essence of a gentleman john ruskin said what the word says that he comes from a pure genes or is perfectly bred after that comes gentleness and sympathy or kind disposition fine imagination he also said gentleman has to learn that it is no part of their duty or privilege to live on other people's toil charles dickens insisted upon the essential dignity of his occupation the present essay a definition of a gentleman is an excerpt from discourse 8 it is a superb example of character writing in this essay a gentleman is an usurping representation of a socio political idea clearly related to a specific class newman's gentleman has a cultured mind he is well behaved he himself stood as an excellent example of a gentleman newman was termed as a gentleman by so many other writers as well he was considered to be a man of great personality some of his qualities are newman defines gentleman as a person who never shows his problems to others this is the most accurate definition of a gentleman what newman means by that that he never shows his problems to others he himself tries to solve all his problems and he never discusses his problems with others just to mention that according to newman a gentleman is always welcoming and waiting with an open arm he always supports you in your problems the gentleman always there in time of distress or disappointment he avoids all clashing of opinion suspicion and makes everyone at their ease newman was like this only 
he always used to come forward to help everyone around him his definition of a gentleman that he is a man in need that's why he is a man indeed a gentleman is a one on whom one can rely upon a gentleman is a one who is selfless and comes forward to help others a true gentleman has all virtues like prudence justice self control and courage his conversation is not monotonous he never believes in gossips and interprets everything in a positive manner he never wishes to hurt anyone's sentiment or feelings now what else do you expect from a man a man who is a gentleman is there to tell you what is right what is wrong but he is not a subdued personality he is not the one who will come under pressure and speak whatever is good to ears this gentleman has got the capability to judge the right this gentleman has the capability to differentiate between correct and incorrect he guides the world a true gentleman is philosophical he accepts all troubles of life as these are part of our life he accepts death because it is his destiny you can remember robert browning and his concept about death when he imagines that death is there at the door step what he said he said i am always a fighter so one fight more and heaven is waiting for me this is just a transformation so this is the sign of a gentleman who is not scared even of death this is the sign of a gentleman that he accepts all the problems bravely courageously this is and making is the best quality of a true gentleman he never leaves any question unanswered he never evades he comes forward tries to solve the problem and whatever answers are there he presents them in front of the people he is not an escapist he is an open minded towards religion he does not act against it he looks on every religion with an impartial eye difficult to find but a gentleman is a gentleman when his point of view is towards humanity when he walks for the sake of humanity not for the sake of a particular religion not for the sake of a particular caste creed or color the gentleman is a gentleman who is open minded towards religion newman's attitude towards religion and towards gentleman is very very inspirational and it's very very welcome one should adopt it to make his life a comfortable life and a good life newman's attitude towards these two area the university that is essential for everyone and his point of view regarding making of a gentleman is worth following happy reading and welcome to the word of newman's writings thanks for visiting epg patshala